What's up peeps, welcome back to Rebranding Safety. Rebranding Safety is a YouTube channel and podcast doing exactly what it says on the tin. So if you're new here, hit subscribe, bell, follow, whatever it is on your screen that looks like it does good things for the algorithm. Today we're talking all about RPE, but before we get into that, Rebranding Safety is brought to you by Risk Fluent Limited. Risk Fluent is the company that has always sat behind Rebranding Safety and we offer a number of services, uh, but primarily consultancy. We offer the technical health and safety side of things and the transformational call cultural human performance stuff as well. So if you need any of those, you need some help with your technical health and safety, you want to change the culture in your organization, then email me, james at riskfluentlimited.com. If you can't remember that, that's cool. It'll be in the description below. I look forward to speaking to you. So RPE then, the basics. RPE is PPE. It's personal protective equipment, but it's for your breathing. So it's respiratory protective equipment. That was really hard to say. I don't know why. Several pieces of legislation will bring a requirement for RPE, such as COSH, the COSH reg, the control of substances hazardous to health. There we go. The asbestos regs, control of asbestos regulations, control of lead at work will obviously require as well. Ionizing radiation is likely to require RPE as well and confined space regs as well. Basically, any work activity that may result in contaminating the air that we breathe, be that dust, be that fume, be that mist, vapor or gas, you're gonna have a duty to protect the worker from the risk of inhaling that and it damaging their body. Some examples of that would be like, we'll be cutting brickwork and slabs and stuff and you run a risk of silica or wood, for example. And a lot of wood dust can also be very harmful. Or welding, fumes from welding can be really damaging. The obvious ones like asbestos, for example. Working with volatile solvents or dusty powders. Confined spaces like trenches and silos or tanks. But before you start to think about RP, there are two very, 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 very important, very, 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 very important pieces of information to understand first. Number one, RPE, respiratory protective equipment, can get confused with breathing apparatus because sometimes they're kind of referred as the same thing and sometimes you'll be like, oh, we actually need BA now, but they're, they're different things, right? Respirators are things that filter the air before you breathe in, but you're, control, you're, you're breathing in the oxygen in the air, right? So it's filtering the air that's around you. Breathing apparatus are, will have an independently fed source of oxygen. Even though you could have a battery fed respirator, it looks like a big chunky bit of kit, it be different from a BA. Okay, so make sure you understand that breathing apparatus where the oxygen is provided you, a clean source of oxygen is provided to you, is different from respirators that are filtering the air that you're, you're in. So what that means is that you couldn't use a respirator in, in an environment that's oxygen deficient because it filters oxygen. So if it's deficient of oxygen, it's just filtering a distinct lack of oxygen. So for an oxygen deficient environment, you would need a breathing apparatus, not a respirator. The second most important thing about about this is that RPE is, you know, is, is really only one way to reduce or control the fumes of the air that we're breathing in, but it should not be your first protocol. RPE should be there to control and reduce the risk of the residual risk. So you must have done something else prior to that, whether it's LEV, whether it's like dampening down, you know, wet drilling and stuff like that, wet cutting. You must have done something else to try and control this. You can't just go like, right, I'm just going to buy a load of FFP freeze and roll them out. You know, that's not really acceptable. You should have taken reasonable and practicable steps to manage the risk and the RPE should be used for the residual risk, not as the primary and only control measure. So RPE then, there are quite a few different types actually, and it's got a bit messy since COVID. So one thing to note here, if you are out looking to purchase primarily FFP2s, but also maybe FFP3s, and you're going onto Amazon to get them or a, another kind of generic sales site, for example, just be careful that you're not buying fakes or maybe not fakes, but actually ones that are not proper FFP2s, FFP3s. To start off with the easy one, you might be buying a different country standard, which is not really acceptable over here, but there are a lot of ones on Amazon, for example, and just, to, I'm not picking on Amazon, it's just an example, that the branding, the pictures, the st it, it's got all of the right words screen on the screen, but ultimately when you purchase it, you're like, actually, this isn't it. So go to the source website and look for a certificate of conformity 
they uh, you should have that 100 but don't just assume by looking at the picture because they've got bs this and ffp this that they are that try and buy from a reputable provider go to the the source website look for a certificate that the product's been tested and it conforms to the right standards also face coverings are not rpe they're not ppe yes we use them through covid and yes we might still continue to use them and i think that's probably a good thing right it's probably going to help but it, it's kind of like right down here and then you've got a bit of a jump to, up to ffp2s and, and the like so not going to get into that but just remember it's not officially class as PPE under RPE. As I kind of touched on earlier, they come in essentially two different types, non-powered, which rely on you breathing to draw the air in, and powered, which has a motor that draws the air in for you. Then you have tight fitting face pieces. These are also referred to as masks normally. And these are ones I couldn't wear. I couldn't wear these because they rely on you being clean shaven and it relies on a really good seal with the wearer's face. These are normally available as both powered and unpowered. And these will require a face fit test. Now we're planning on doing a video on that so you can tell us some more about it, but essentially you will need to have the training and competency to be able to carry out a face fit test or have somebody there that can carry out a face fit test to make sure that it's on and it's fitted well that's actually working if you just chuck it on it's not going to work it's, it's completely pointless it might say act as well as say like a face covering in eg that it's it's doing a little bit but it's not really doing what it needs to do so if you are wearing tight fitting respirators you must be clean shaven and you must you must have a face fit so you can get loose fitting face pieces and these are only really available as power or breathing apparatus and these rely on essentially providing enough air for you to use to prevent any leaking because they're loose fitting essentially examples of these will be like hoods big massive helmets all the way up to like full suits okay so let's have a look at some so i want to big a big big shout out here to a company called ultimo safety who have provided us with a couple of examples two examples for ffp2 two for ffp3 and also a half mask as well so let's jump onto the table and let's have a look at some of these. We're going to do the first ever unboxing on rebranded safety. So Ultimo have sent us over some products for us to kind of demonstrate for you different products and kind of what they look like. We've got an FFP2 and FFP3 and we have a half mask as well. So let's have a look. We'll start off with the half mask. We're just going to do like a little unboxing so you can kind of see what they look like. It's not going to be like a technical review or anything. So you got your half mask. Um, it's going to sit quite nice and this was like a rubbery one. So this is going to sit quite nice on your face. You're going to need to be clean shaven wearing this. You're going to need to have a face fit test as well to make sure it's fit nice to your face and just wearing this as is won't work you're going to need to you hopefully just about see there's like some ridges here and it's, the product's going to come with some filters and you can buy filters depending on what you're doing what you're using so it'll give you like um, a rating of its particle filter and then gas filter and so on and so forth you need to make sure you got the right filter for the right job so it'll come off the back of your cost assessment that's a half mask it's going to sit quite nicely on your face like so, so you will look like Banksy. Then we've got their Defender series. So we've got a few of their Defender series, just to, again, so we can get a good feel for what they look like. So you know what you're looking at when you go and buy one. So kind of two types of each one. Let me make sure I've got the two FFP2s. I mean, I have ones with like a little filter in them and the ones that are kind of filter through the, the material. So you get quite a lot in this box. So these are disposable, remember. Um, so you're only gonna really use them for like a shift at max. Um, so your FFP2s, you can, they've got quite rigid. You can tell when you've kind of hold an FFP2 and an FFP3 in your hand, you can you can kind of feel the difference. You feel it kind of a bit more chunkier and, and kind of a bit more padded, I suppose, on the FFP3. Uh, but these are going to filter through the through the material, essentially. And these ones, pretty much all of the ones actually uh, sent through by Ultimo have like a little Ultimo low breathing resistance, which is something that a lot of people psychologically struggle with. Uh, but ultimately, again, going to need that face fit test on this one. you got like bridge round your, round your nose and then like a little 
kind of rubbery thingamajig here that's going to kind of create a nice seal there. So you get quite a lot in the box from Ultimo. So thank you very much, FFP2 Defender Series. But this one's got your kind of little filter on the front there. So again, you've got the you've got the ridge on the top. You've got the little flappy bit. Good bit of elastic around the back of the head. Simple, really. That's your FFP2. Like I say, you can really feel the difference between the FFP2s and the FFP3s. So let's have a look at some of the FFP3s. Uh, here again, the Defender Series with the, the little filter on the front. So it, it kind of feels a bit more, it's, it's fluffy, <laughs> but like it, it just feels a bit thicker, a bit more sturdy. The, the kind of rubbery uh, seal, in a way, goes all around uh, the face this time. You've got a kind of dual strap on this one, kind of a top and a bottom, and they do come with little instructions as well as to how to do that. So you basically kind of clip it together around the back so you can kind of see hopefully you can see you got two bits like that and they clip together like that so you would kind of put the top bit over put that at the bottom of your neck and kind of then roll it up to like the lower part of your head that's your ffp freeze and like i say you can get a good feel for those they're like already rigid around the nose so when you kind of have those two straps and this rubber seal and and the shape to like the natural nose curve so to speak it kind of fits around there so it's gonna get a bit of a better seal if that makes sense and then again, their other Defender Series FFP3. These ones are kind of out there. And also the little bit of innovation here, which I don't know, but you know when you buy a loaf of bread and they, they do this with the loaf of bread, they have a bit like a, a bit of tape around it. And it's always, you've got to try and find a bit. Here they've got like a, another bit of tape where you just kind of pull it and it comes apart. Look at that. I love little innovations like that. When someone's gone, this really pisses people off. Let's saw it. So in this one, you've got, again, you've got like a two strap for your top and your bottom. You've got the full kind of face seal I suppose not full face but kind of like all around your mouth and your nose so to speak all the way around um you have got the steel ridge around here but you still got a bit of a shape in a natural shape in anyway but then you've got the steel ridge around here anyway because this whole thing here is like the filter in effect as well so that's your FFP2s your FFP3s and your half mask and again you've got the instructions along the top is going to help you work out how to put these on essentially you're going to put this bit on your face first and then kind of fit these around the back and enable you to kind of pull tighter through there so to speak so you can get a real nice face fit and like I say all of these are going to need a face fit test so your employees or you will need to be able to carry out a face fit test for you to be able to wear these again you get quite a lot in this bag as well so you get 10 10 in there 10 pieces thank you very much Ultimo Safety